For the past year, I've been using version one of the Keychron K2 mechanical keyboard at my desk for things like video editing, writing, and playing games. But they came out with version two and I have another place where I need a keyboard. So I picked up the Keychron K2 version two. So in this video, we're going to walk through what's different between version one and version two. We're gonna unbox version two, show you how to set it up, how to switch out keys for Windows or Mac. And I'll finish up the video talking about wrist rests because this thing is pretty thick. You're gonna want something sitting in front of it. And I've tried out three different kinds and I have a favorite. So I'll share that at the end. So let's quickly open this up and we'll get into switching keys out and a little bit of a starter guide for how to use this. When you open it up, it tells you if you're a Windows user, please switch out the keycaps for things like Command and Option to be Windows key and Alt key. And that's pretty simple to do. I'll show you how to do that. And then on the other side, you have instructions. So how to connect it to your computer, how to change light effects, turning off auto sleep, turning off the backlight, etc. Open this up. So there it is, Keychron K2. You can see it looks a little different than the K1, but not much different. The K1's middle buttons are more like brown, I would say. The version two are more gray. On the left side, you have your USB-C charging, a switch to flip it between Windows and Mac, and then a switch here that either goes Bluetooth, off, or corded mode. On the bottom, pretty straightforward, you have rubber in each of the corners, and then you have feet that pop out, which increase the incline. And there's actually two settings for those, smaller, and bigger. You get a full user guide for how to set it up. And then in this section here, you're getting your charging cable, USB-C on one side, USB-A on the other. Then you have your key remover tool. So this will help you switch out keys. You have an orange version of the LED button in the corner. This one here you can switch out, or there is a gray version of the escape key if you don't want that orange showing. Next, let's quickly switch one of the keys. I'm gonna switch out the escape key. So let's say I didn't want it to be orange, I want it to be gray and kind of blend into my setup a little more. This is how you change a key. It's pretty straightforward. Find the extra key that you're going to switch out right here. Escape key gray, I'm gonna trade with the escape key orange here. We're going to grab our little tool and you wanna open it a little bit. Gonna pop it over the key like so. And then if you hold down the keyboard, give it a little wiggle, should just pop right off. Shouldn't be a problem. So you can see here, I have red switches. All these switches are going to be red. We'll talk about switches later when it comes to choosing which keyboard to buy and what switches to get, but you can see it right there. That's what it sounds like. Pretty quiet. So we have the escape key here. We're gonna line it up in the right direction. We're gonna set it on top and you're gonna have to push pretty hard because you gotta get it to line up there. You can see that it stuck out there the first time I pressed it, but as I pressed it in fully, now it's there. And you just wanna make sure that it's not any taller than the, the ones next to it in the row that it's in. Good to go. And like I said, you would do that with like the Windows key and the Alt key if you were using this on a Windows computer. It shipped pre-set up for Mac, which is what I'm using this keyboard for. So we're just gonna leave the rest as it is. Call good. There are two ways to use this keyboard, either through Bluetooth or connected via a cord. I typically use Bluetooth just because I want a cleaner setup. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do here cord also it's more straightforward so you don't really need much tutorial for that to connect it to your computer you're going to hold function and hit one two or three and you might need to hold it for a few seconds to get it to start blinking but that will basically make it findable on your computer with bluetooth then when you want to switch between one two or three you can have it set up for three computers you just hold function tap one two or three and it'll switch to that different computer so when i just had one of these and i had three different setups one with my laptop one with my pc one with my mac pro I would just move my keyboard around, but now I have three of them, so I don't have to do that anymore. As far as charging goes, it does use USB-C, comes with that cable, and it will blink red out of this little port here when the battery's getting low, but you can just plug in a cable there, and it'll charge it up. And like I said, make sure to switch it to Mac or Windows, depending on what you're using. You turn it on by actually moving this from the middle to the Bluetooth side, and then you can turn it off. It also has auto power off, which I leave, leave set to on, so after about 10 minutes, auto power's off, that's just so I don't have to plug it in as much, but if you're okay with turning it on and off yourself and having to charge it a little bit more, it will stay connected to your computer, which is nice as opposed to you know waiting for it to reconnect. Once you have it on and connected, whether you have a RGB backlight or just a regular backlight, the button in the upper right corner cycles through the different options for them. So let me make this as bright as possible. And you can see you got multicolored, you got stuff you know flickering through different settings. I think there's probably close to 15, I feel like, when I cycle through to get through the main one I use, which is just 
all one color. Um, so keep cycling through all of them like this. And then if you want to change what the actual color is of the background, so let's say this is the one I want normally, which is just like one color completely white. If you hold function and then hit the arrow keys, it'll change through the colors. So it went rainbow, then red, then you got like a yellow, green, blue, purple. So there's a lot of different colors you can have. I usually just keep it on white, and then I usually turn the brightness down either all the way or just to one click so I can see it a little bit. Two more key commands, and then we'll get into comparing version one to version two if you're trying to choose between the two. To toggle on or off that auto sleep after 10 minutes, hold function, S and O for four seconds. That will toggle it basically. So it'll either turn it off or turn it on. If you want to just turn off the backlight, let's turn it all the way up, just hold function, hit the backlight button in the upper right, it'll just turn off automatically. One trick I have with using the Keychron is here on the right side, they have page up and down and home and end. So I actually use page up to make my window maximum size of my screen, page down to move it to my next display, home goes to the left side of my screen and end moves the window to the right side of my screen. So I just use those keys to quickly do some window management, which is really helpful. Let's take a quick look at version one versus version two and see what's different. So here's version one at the top and version two at the bottom. I left the orange on the version one so we can know which is which. There's not much difference when you're looking at it top down. Like I said before, the interior buttons are a little more gray in version two. They were a little more brown in version one. Maybe that's also just fading over time. I'm not sure, but not much difference when you're just looking straight down at them. Before we flip these on their side and show you the main differences between version one and two, there is something big in version two. Oh, it didn't work. Cap locks. There you go. Version one, the caps lock key didn't light up when you pressed it, so that's new. Version two also uses Bluetooth 5.1 instead of version 3.0 in the original K2, so that's an increase and should help with connectability. If you flip them on their side, now you can see the difference. Remember, version one is the orange escape key. You can see it's basically flat from front to back. So you'd have to use the feet to angle it up, but the version two has a built-in incline here. So it does increase that back row height a little bit, which does really help with typing and reaching those keys. Also version one only has the one angle of foot. You can see it just has that one angle. But if we use the second version, bring that up here, you can see it has a double version. So if you want the feet to be small or big. Those are your options. Okay, you got your keys changed. You got this connected to your computer. You got it set up how you want. What's next? Next, we'll talk wrist rests, which is pretty hard to say if you have a lisp. The first one I picked up was this one from Glorious Gaming, and it's the compact size. So make sure when you're buying a wrist rest that you don't get the full size one for a full size keyboard, because this keyboard is only 75% of the keys. So compact size, picked it up on Amazon, I think 25, 30 bucks or so. Um, overall, pretty good. It's, it's nice and tall, it's about an inch thick. Um, it's, it's deep, so there's some room to rest your wrist on at the slanted area here, but it, it, it shows oil. I don't know how else to say it. Like, it, it, it gets shiny. So here, let me see if you can see this here. I mean, over time, it, it just, it gets kind of shiny. I got the black one. Uh, it does come in like a walnut color too, but my desk was walnut, so I was like, oh, I'll just get the black one. And, you know, I don't love that, but functionality, it's great. It has good rubber feet at the bottom, so it doesn't move around. Like when you set it down, it stays and it's in, in a good position. But recently, because I got two more keyboards, I'm like, let me try out the other options for wrist rests. Maybe I'll want one different for when I'm gaming. Maybe I'll want one different for my desk where I'm typing a lot. And so I have three different ones here. I also got this key crown one. The Glorious Gaming one is a little narrower. And if you put it up next to the key crown, it is actually a tad narrower than the actual device, than the actual keyboard, which is fine with me. Um, but then the Keychron one that actually is made by the same company that makes the K2 is wider. So it's a little bit wider than the keyboard, which, which is a little strange, but it is what it is. My biggest problem with the Keychron one isn't quite deep enough. So if you want it up flush against your keyboard, my, my hands are bigger. I'm six foot four. They're not massive though. I have kind of average size hands. And you know, I'm almost resting my wrist at the, at the edge of this because you know, to get to the middle row, you know, that's, that's kind of where my, my hands rest. But when I use this one from glorious gaming, just the extra distance that I have lets me rest my wrists a little further away. So the solution to that would be 
keep this a little bit further away from your keyboard and then it works great. That might be what I would do if this is this is the look that I want or the size that I want, but you know, in general, it's just nice to be able to slide it up against and, and have it there. So it does still do the job, but I just feel like my hands are, are hanging off the edge if I don't have that extra bit of space. Now let's look at the other one from Glorious Gaming, which is more of a like a memory foam material. And if you compare this to the other ones, I'll kind of put them on the side here. It's, it's about as sized the same as the wooden one from uh, Glorious Gaming, but it's soft, which which is nice. But I don't like it. It it it's it doesn't stay in place. Like these two do not go anywhere. This one slides all over the place. You know, it does have some sort of like rubber material on the bottom, but compared to these two that have really nice grippy feet to it that make it so they don't slide around, you know, I would have to modify this thing for it not to piss me off <laughs> because whether it's sitting on a wood surface or a leather mat like I have on one desk or more of a mouse pad consistency on my gaming desk, you know, this thing moves all around. It's it's super lightweight and it just doesn't stay in place. And I, I know I've complained about this now for a half minute or a minute, but you know, this this is going to make me return this one. I might keep the Keychron wooden one because I do like how it looks because um, a lot of my stuff is walnut colored wood, um, but I will keep it further away from the keyboard like this probably when I'm using it. Um, and I'm curious to see if it gets as shiny as this does. But I'm sure I could treat this a little better, clean it, get the oils off of it or whatever. It's not that big a deal. Just a quick note, I'm not sponsored by Keychron or they didn't pay me anything to make this video. I'm just nerding out about these keyboards. So uh, I think it's cool they launched on Kickstarter like SwitchPod did. But other than that, no affiliation <laughs> with Keychron. Let's talk about buying them. So if you're looking to buy a Keychron keyboard, you can find them online. Some places like Amazon, they might have some of the models in stock, but you might not know if that's a version one or a version two. I personally bought directly from them and it shipped via DHL. And I got it in about a week's time. They were out of stock for a while around Chinese New Year in the January, February timeframe, but I checked their website every few days just to see when they were gonna get stock and they had a banner at the top that said, you know, when different models will be shipping. So I ended up picking up two of the K2s, not the aluminum version, which is $10 more. I just got the regular version and I got the RGB backlight because the plain white backlight was out of stock. I don't really need the RGB, don't really want it, but for $10 more, whatever. When it comes to switches, there's three choices. Uh, actually, there's more like six choices depending on which keyboard you're getting, but for the K2, there were three, red, brown, and blue. And you do some Google searching, do some look on looking on YouTube to see which of those fits your style or preference. I went with red because it's the quietest, honestly. Um, I do like the tactile feel of a mechanical keyboard, but I didn't want the clickiness that blue gives you, the kch 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 every time you're pressing a button. I didn't really want that. I just wanted it to be a little bit more subtle than that. And then brown also didn't really fit in with my style. Um, I'll, I'll link to a video below that kind of goes through the different switches and you know what, what they sound like, but you're not really gonna know what they feel like unless you try them yourself. So if you have a friend with mechanical keyboards, maybe try out the switches they have, or you can get one that's hot swappable if you want to be able to change them all out yourself later. I got ones that are just going to be red all the time. As we're choosing which layout or which size keyboard to get from them, there are a bunch of different options. Um, I definitely wanted one that had wireless, so I went with the K series instead of the C series, which those are all wired. And then it kind of depends on your preference. Do you need a number pad? Do you want some spacing between the keys? Do you want it to be really slim and low to your desk or table? I wanted one that had most of the buttons, so about 75% of the buttons, had a little bit of a height to it for typing. And this one does the job for me. I almost got the K4 that had the number pad on the right side because uh, I do spreadsheets and finance and other calculations and stuff like that. And it's nice to have a number pad, but I don't like it pushing my mouse to the right. And I wanted to have keyboards that are exactly the same in all of my setups because once you really get to know this keyboard and know where things are, you just get faster overall at typing, at video editing, at gaming, or whatever else you're doing with this keyboard. So I like to have the same keyboard set up at each of my stations, my filming set, my PC, and my Mac. So yeah, keyboards. I don't think I'll ever make another video about keyboards. Maybe it's time for mice, I don't know. I always just get MX Masters, so I don't really have much interesting to say about mice. 
But uh, if you're interested in video production, photography, running your own business, things like that, you can subscribe to the channel. If you're just interested in keyboards and you're a keyboard nerd, uh, probably not going to be another video like this on my channel ever again. But thanks so much for watching. I've been Caleb Wojcik. About to hit 50,000 subs on YouTube. Hit that sub button, hit like, whatever people do on YouTube. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.